Good morning everyone, uh, Dr. Bennett here. Um, I wanted to start off this online portion of our statics course with um, basically a review of a problem that we started going through in the class immediately before spring break, so a week last Friday. Um, you're gonna have to bear with me and my dodgy camera work um, recording this at home on my phone. Um, so please bear with me. Um, so you remember uh, the example that we started was um, on a topic called space trusses, which is basically the 3D extension of the trusses that we were considering in the weeks previous. And the example that we were going through was based on this example here from the textbook. It's on page 276. And um, it's basically a worked example from the textbook, um, which shows how to work through uh, the various stages of solving this 3D truss problem for this uh, triangular based uh, pyramid type shape truss. Now, what I did in class was basically try to simplify that example a little bit so that it was um, basically doable within the time limit of the class and it was brought to my attention that some of the assumptions that I made made uh, the example um, a little bit tricky to solve so um, basically I'm just going to go over um, the example again so what we have here is basically this triangular base pyramid um, truss shape there's four nodes, A, B, C, and D. They have coordinates um, shown here, here, and here. A is at the origin. And then there's also this externally applied force, F, applied at D. And we have um, directions and magnitudes in Newtons. So there's also... Um, some assumptions that we have to make in order to be able to solve this uh, trust problem. So the assumptions are, are listed here, so I'll read these out. So um, the trust structure rests on a smooth floor. So that means that we can model um, the node at point B as basically like a roller support. So it only has a reaction in the normal direction. Joint A rests in the corner where the walls meet, so you can think of this like um, basically the corner of a room where you have a floor here in the uh, XZ plane and then a wall here and a wall here in the XY and YZ planes respectively. And that means that the joint uh, at point A will have three reactions because it's prevented from moving or translating because it's pushed into the corner of the wall. So which is where these three reactions come from here. And we're told that joint C rests against the wall um, here, and therefore it's free to slide along the wall in the X direction, but it's prevented from translating in the Y and Z directions, which is why we only have these two reaction forces at point C. So all of that means is that these six reactions or six unknowns that we have FAX, FAY, FAZ, point A, FBY at B, and FCY and FCZ at C gives us six total unknowns. And then you'll remember that in it for a 3D problem, we can apply six equilibrium equations, which means that our problem is statically determinate. And the question here is to find all of the axial forces in all of the members. So that's the problem set up, and we started to solve it um, in class, which I'll review a little bit for you now. So I've got a brew on the go here, some British tea to go with the British weather at the moment. So. You'll recall the first thing we do is apply the equilibrium equations, first of all resolving the forces in the x, y, and z directions. So in the x direction, we have the x reaction force at A 
and also this component of the force applied at D. So that gives us this equation. Some of the forces in the y direction, well, we have three reaction forces, FAY, FBY, and FCY, and we also have the y component of the force applied at D, which is where this equation comes from. And then um, resolving forces in the z direction, we have these two reaction forces, the one at A and the one at C, and also the Z component of the force applied at D. So that gives us three equilibrium equations by resolving the forces, and we can solve the top one here to find FAX um, as two newtons. The rest of this we can't solve at the moment because we have too many unknowns for the number of equations, so we have to go ahead and resolve the moments. Now, we're going to resolve the moments about point A because this eliminates the three reaction forces um, at A. So we have to consider moments due to the reaction at B, moments due to the reaction at C, and also the moments due to the force applied at D. So our um, moment equation will have three components to it which is going to give us three cross products to solve. So namely there will be the position vector from um, the, the point where we're resolving the moments about, in this case A, to the point where the force is applied. So AB, AC and AD crossed with the corresponding force vectors. So. What we do is we find the, um, the position vectors RAB, RAC and RAD, put them into our determinants to calculate, so here, here and here, and then we plug in, in the third row, the force vector at those points. So here we only have a um, force in the y direction because we only have the reaction in the y direction at point B so the other two components are zeros. At C we have reactions in the y and z directions but no x component so x is zero and we have FCY and FCZ in here and then the force applied at point D we just plug in the components that were given over here. So what that means is, is when we calculate these three determinants, um, we have various components in the i, j, and k directions, which then gives us our three further equilibrium equations, namely the, some of the moments in the x direction, some of the moments in the y direction, some of the moments in the z direction. So what we do to get these is we just take the i components and put them in here, the j components, and put them into the, the Y summation and the K components and put them into the J uh, the Z um, summation. And from that, we therefore have our six total equilibrium equations. We have the three moment ones here and the three force ones that we found over here. So um, by solving those six equations simultaneously for the six unknowns, we find uh, these um, and uh, reaction forces here. So that gives us the problem set up and that is um, similar to uh, the techniques that we've been using in the previous uh, weeks but now we have to go on to solve for the axial forces in the members of the truss and basically to do this we use a technique called method of joints um, which we've seen for 2D applications, but this time we have to consider the method of joints in 3D. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to isolate joint B because we're going to have the fewest number of unknowns here. We're going to have an unknown axial force in member BA, an unknown axial force in member BD, 
and an unknown axial force in member BC. Uh, we will also have this um, reaction force here, FBY, which we've already calculated. So we're going to have three unknowns, and because we're solving this system in 3D, we're going to be able to find three um, equilibrium equations in order to find those three unknowns. So what we do is we isolate joint B. So let me label that up here, joint B. And uh, we draw a free body diagram of what's going on at joint B. We have a coordinate system which tells us our positive directions. And um, we can't add any more information to this um, free body diagram at the moment. We don't know angles and things like that. All we know is that the force vector in each of these um, in each of these members is given by the magnitude of the axial force multiplied by the unit vector in the direction of that member. And the magnitude here, given inside these bars, is what we ultimately want to try and find. So we write down the axial force basically as the, the multiple of the magnitude multiplied by the unit vector in that direction. So in order to plug this into our equilibrium equations, we need to find these unit vectors. And to find the unit vectors, we need to find the position vectors, scale it by its magnitude, and then divide it through. So I've done this example here for the position vector RBA. So you'll recall that that means we take the position of point A, subtract the position of point B, so you'll see that over here, A is at the origin, B has coordinates 2, 0, 3, so we subtract that to get this vector, and the position vector um, magnitude is therefore going to be the sum of the squares, square rooted, gives us root 13, and therefore we can find the unit vector in the BA direction as the position vector divided by its magnitude to get this. So now that we have the unit vector in the corresponding direction, we can do that for the other uh, position vectors, namely BD and BC, and therefore we can write the unknown axial forces in the members BA, BD and BC as this system here. So now this gives us the three unknown axial forces in terms of components in the X, Y and Z directions because we've found the unit vectors in those directions. So now we can go ahead and apply our equilibrium equations in three dimensions. Um, namely the sum of the forces in x, y and z and equate them to zero. So these three equations here come from the components in the x, y and z directions of these um, equations here. So to get the first equilibrium equation we sum the forces in the x direction so we have negative 0.555 from here we have zero here, so you'll notice that we have no TBD component in this equation here. And then we have positive 0.555 TBC from here. So we do that for the X, Y and Z components of this system here, equate them to zero and solve simultaneously. Now we have these three unknowns here and we can apply three equilibrium equations in, th in three dimensions, right? Which means that we can solve this system for the unknown um, magnitudes of these axial forces, which we ultimately wanted to find. And we get the following uh, solutions here. Now, that gives us the um, tensions in members BA, BD and BC 
and therefore we need to go ahead and basically chase these further unknowns around the truss system by next isolating joint C, working out what's going on in the member CD and CA, then finally going up to joint D, isolating the, the joint at D and working out what's going on in DA. So the technique for continuing the solution to this problem looks like this. Um, and what I would like you to do is please check that you can get these solutions um, by isolating first of all the joint at C, finding these unknown um, magnitudes of the tensions in the same technique that we've, we've just used. Um, and finally isolating at joint D to work out um, the final unknown axial force. So please go ahead and work through that example, make sure that you can get these solutions and if you have any trouble doing that send me a message um, and I'll try to, to help you out. It is um, outlined, the solution to this is outlined in the textbook but basically all you require to do is just follow the same technique um, as we did to find the axial forces starting at joint B. So that will basically conclude our discussion on space trusses. You can see here how the textbook goes through that example that I've just been describing. It's also worthwhile that you review the solution to this example. This is another worked example from the textbook given on page 278. This is example 6.5. Um, a very similar 3D truss structure, the kind of triangular based um, pyramid type shape. Please work through that example, make sure you can get the numbers that the textbook gets, pay attention to the little um, yellow boxes, They're, they do a very good job of explaining what the, what the solution method is. And again, check that you can get the right answers down here by working this out by by hand and um, if you have any troubles doing that then please let me know and I'll try and help out as best I can so that's it for this first uh, little video um, that concludes um, our, our, our classes on space trusses next we're going to start to look at frames and machines so stay tuned